Good morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to be uh, here. Sorry about the microphone. I'm here to be here. I'm very thrilled to be here today um, with three amazing French entrepreneurs based in Canada who made the mark both in Canada and internationally. Um, you may or may not have heard of them, uh, but I guarantee you that you will leave this uh, panel with great takeaways. I encourage you people from the audience to ask questions. Um, I guess we'll, we'll keep uh, 10, 15 minutes at the end for your Q&A. And now, let me introduce you to my distinguished guest. I have with me Rudolf Barrer, CEO and co-founder of Podlog. Um, Sébastien Gendron, CEO and co-founder of Transport. And lastly, I have Olivier Berger, CEO and co-founder of um, sorry, I got a pop up here. Um, of Wonder AI. Brief introduction. Uh, Rudolf came to Canada when he was 17 years old in Montreal for his studies at HEC Montreal, uh, my fellow alumnus. Launched his business, Podlog, in 2013 with his roommate, um, Louis, Louis in Plateau Montréal, au Royal. Podlog provides hyper targeted consumer insights that help uh, retailers and real estate companies understand the habit of both shoppers and non-shoppers. So basically, Podlog's technology can predict lifespans of shops. And uh, I would like to hear more about that. We will jump on the second part for the story. Sébastien worked at Airbus, Lean Manufacturing Manager, and Bombardier, Senior Logistics Engineer, and um, project manager before launching his own business. Lin Sig he's a Lean Six Sigma black belt. And he's also the co-founder and board member of our uh, La French Tech Toronto. Transport is dedicated to bringing the Hyperloop, a very high speed ground transportation concept to reality. The Hyperloop technology has the potential to be one of the most disruptive technologies of the 21st century. And he will tell us more about that. Um, 30 employees, I think, right now, raised 20 million so far, and um, targeted markets, Canada, US, Russia, and Middle East. And lastly, Olivier Berger, uh, Wonder AI, uh, all career in FinTech for startups, two um, he co-founded. And uh, also, he has some experience at the corporate side um, at GE Capital, expertise in finance, innovation, AI, career in seven countries. And Wonders Technology unleashes the financial and po cultural power of a new asset class, bringing intelligence to alternative assets. Um, he has an amazing team with researchers from MIT and UFT. And his clients are big insurers and wealth management firms in the US and Europe. So guys, did I introduce you the right way? <laughs> did I miss anything? It, it was good enough. It was good enough. That was perfect. Thank you. Now, let's. Um, today's uh, panel will be uh, separated into three parts. The first one, I want to know your story. Uh, the second one, you know, the culture and how you um, how you deal with friends. Uh, being French in Canada and also, you know, you targeted um, a new market. And lastly, any takeaways with funding and uh, growth, your growth part. So can you describe in one word uh, life in Canada and explain why you choose it? Uh, let's start with Sebastian. Okay. Um... <laughs> In one word, uh, life in Canada. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to break the ice, you know. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, uh, uh, it may be a good spot, actually, with the global warming uh, uh, kind of uh, coming around the world. Uh, yeah. But in one world, I would say um, maybe, um, yeah, tolerance. Um, I know that, Olivier, we may disagree on that, but uh, <laughs> I guess... Uh, Happy to debate that that's the objective of today on that. Okay, uh, Olivier. But, um... <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, so, yes, there is, there is tolerance in, in Toronto, in Canada, and the rest of Canada. Yeah. Uh, the other words I could mention is it's easy. It's an easy life. Mm -hmm. 
many different aspects for one word. Interesting. And Rodolphe, what about you? And one word would be um, multicultural. Love it. Okay. Um, you're all French entrepreneurs who decided to come and open your business in North America. Could you tell us more about the beginning of your adventure? You know, in Montreal, for example, Rodolphe, who are in Toronto, uh, Sébastien and uh, Olivier, and where you stand today with the business. Um, yeah, so I came to Montreal, as you said in your introduction, to uh, do my studies uh, 12 years ago now. Um, so it, it was not really intentional for me to uh, launch a company in Canada. And a lot of my French uh, uh, friends are asking me what it's like to actually build a company in Canada. Uh, I've never built a company in France, so I can't really compare. And to me, it was uh, it was the logical thing to do post my, my studies. My life was yeah. there. I had all my contact there. My, my personal life was here, is mm -hmm. here. Um, so I decided to, I decided to, to start my company here. And now that I, uh, take a step back and I can compare yeah. with some of my friends who have done the same in Europe, I realized that it might've been easier for me being based in Canada to launch a company because I had like tons of grants, tons of uh, help from the government, etc., uh, that people in France uh, didn't necessarily had. Um, but yeah, it was, so it, it was kind of an unintentional decision that I've made uh, almost uh, six or seven years ago now. Gotcha. Thank you. What about you, uh, Olivier? Uh, for me, it's um, Canada is kind of a, a choice of random. It's my we, we change countries quite often every three years. Mm -hmm. And that was my my wife's um, uh, time to choose a country. So she chose Canada. So we arrived in Canada without knowing that much. Um, uh, so I, I worked the first few years at uh, G Capital there as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But then when the crisis, the financial crisis hits, I left and I started my first company. And actually, you know, to, kind of to illustrate the world easy, I was. I raised funds in Montreal, but I still lived uh, in Toronto and I was traveling back and forth between the two cities. And uh, for people who don't know Toronto, there's an airport downtown by the lake. So going to the airport takes 15 minutes, then you arrive in Montreal after an hour. So it makes the city very close by. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was a startup in AI, and still a startup in AI and uh, in FinTech. Uh, I left the company then um, but was very much interested in alternative assets yeah. and especially in art assets. So I found a co-founder, an amazing woman called Sophie Percival, mm -hmm. who was based in Toronto as well at that time. And we started Wonder about uh, two years ago, two years and a half ago. Hmm. And uh, Sebastian, yeah, what is your story? It's kind of a, a bit similar and different uh, at the same time. Um, I. Uh, we, uh, we landed in Canada and first in Montreal, so that was in 2010, uh, mm -hmm. because that was uh, kind of easier to actually get a working permit in Canada than in the US. And uh, I came to, uh, to uh, work for Bombardier. I wanted an international experience uh, after Airbus in Toulouse. And um, we kind of had a, 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 back in the days, like in 2010, uh, Pauline Marwal was was leading the, the the province, and that was kind of a bit uh, too uh, nationalist uh, for me. So after <laughs> two years, uh, uh, and maybe uh, I wanted to kind of have an international experience. And there's uh, the French community in Montreal is pretty uh, pretty uh, I would say heavy. I would say so. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's try to uh, emerge into um, uh, uh, English kind of type of culture. So after yeah. two years, uh, we had the, we we kind of said, okay, what should we do? Uh, should we get back to uh, Europe or continue the adventure? And then we said, okay, let's try Toronto and see uh, how it goes. And it's been eight years now in Toronto, uh, working well. At some mm -hmm. point, I had enough of those uh, big corporation and uh, decided to start uh, Transpod. And similar to Olivier, I met, uh, 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 I would say. Uh, a really smart guy. Uh, his name is Ryan Jensen, my my associate and and co-founder as well for yes. the for Transpod, uh -huh. and uh, it's been five years now. It's working uh, uh, quite well, and uh, and the international aspect of Toronto, we can really appreciate it. Uh, maybe more than 
Yeah, I think there is a pros and cons from the two uh, two cities, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so far we we continue, and now we're dealing with the uh, west of Canada. The one word I wanted wanted to say is that the funny thing is that in 2010, when we arrived, many kind of uh, French people, European people, were kind of landing in Canada for a few years with the objective to to go in, in, in the US, to, to go to the US, uh, either in uh, New York or California and so on. Yeah. And that was when Obama was uh, uh, leading okay. the country. And then when Trump got elected, we were kind of happy to be in Canada. In Canada. And, yeah, and we said, <laughs> okay. Uh, and even and now actually, even uh, with uh, Biden uh, coming back in, in mm -hmm. power, um, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's different. It's not the same as a few years ago. and. I think there is uh, some advantages to be uh, on that side of the border, for sure. Fair enough. And what about Olivier? What, what, so how Toronto is a base to sell to US and Europe? Can you comment on, on that? Yeah, so, so Canada is a bit as uh, the, the line in between the Francophone world and the Anglophone world, in a way. Mm -hmm. So when you deal, for instance, in the US coming from Toronto, for, for them, it's just another city up north. Um, you know, what is yeah. Canada and what is not Canada is kind of blurry coming from the U.S. So when you sell in New York or in Boston on the West Coast, uh, being from Canada doesn't make you necessarily come in from another country in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, and uh, back to what I explained very uh, early on is there's an airport downtown 50 minutes away from most people. And you can be in New York within an hour and an hour and 15 minutes and you take the train and subway and you're in New York very quickly early morning by 9 30 you can take the first flight so it makes hopping between Toronto and New York uh, mm -hmm. on a day you do it every day some people do it every day yeah. uh, extremely easy actually and then if you want to sell in Boston or other places you're very close by to North America uh, then mm. the Europe is also very close to me from Canada and selling from Canada is easier than if you were selling from the US to Europe so in very natural, convenient. Very convenient. Very easy. Very actually. convenient. Yeah. And and Rudolf, can, can you comment? You know, this is more this uh, international um, relations. But for Rudolf, how did you grow the local market? Because I remember um, watching some videos of you in the past, and you mentioned at first you started by interviewing uh, five thousand people at your local neighborhood. So how how did you grow this business? Yeah, so, so Potluck is a survey technology, basically. So in in one sentence, what we do is we survey people uh, by intercepting them on social networks. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. So we replace uh, what we call web panels, consumer panels, or phone calls to survey people. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we started the company, uh, I wanted to do things that didn't scale. And I've done things that don't scale at all. I've actually intercepted people in the street uh, to understand people like you and I, uh, to understand what why do we hate surveys that mm -hmm. much why 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 people really hate intrinsically uh, surveys and what uh, should we do to actually uh, overcome mm -hmm. that and it led us to to invent the technology that we've done but it was really sort of a a very, very early model where I was trying to find uh, the recipe uh, to actually conduct surveys in a more modern way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's what I've done. And I've indeed interviewed uh, almost 5,000 wow. people in my co-founder, my, my girlfriend, <laughs> some interns, etc., in the street for one year yes. to understand why people are not taking surveys. Thank you for sharing the story. Um, and people are not taking surveys for two reasons. They have no time and no interest. <laughs> that was the main conclusion. One year, mm -hmm. one year of work to come down to that conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> After 5,000 people. <laughs> OK, now let, let's jump into culture, um, Tem Chaik. Um, so Rudolf Sebastian, what is the cultural difference between Montreal and Toronto? Uh, if you can comment on innovation, the talent pool. I leave it to you. No, Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian, yes. First. You, you go first. I throw you under the bus. That's okay. Go first. Uh, I'll, well, I'll, I'll share my experience. Then I'm sure you have a different one. Um, uh, so part of the uh, Canadian culture, uh, Quebec has a history and uh, and really proud to uh, keep the French language uh, moving forward and and. Um, I have to say that it's um, 
it, it's good not only for Quebec, but it's good for Canada as a whole. And uh, and we can even see that uh, on the uh, Ontario side, that influence, uh, but in a good way. Uh, so one of the key examples is that uh, when you arrive in, in Quebec as a, a French guy, uh, since there is too many French people in Montreal, uh, I mean, for me, I, I, I could feel that you're not always uh, welcome. I said, okay, fine. I understand. I mean, uh, it's kind of uh, too many people, uh, uh, French people are kind of uh, landing in, in Montreal. And so um, when you arrive in Toronto, it's uh, France is now, uh, wow, it's amazing what you do in the kind of love Paris. The, what do you do in Toronto? You should, you, should, you should stay in France. It's much better and so on. So it's really kind of the, the difference between... Uh, 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 Montreal and, and Toronto on that side, mm -hmm. um, and then on the um, for um, I think Montreal is probably a, a great city if you want to have access to uh, festivals uh, over the summer and um, and also kind of probably as a student where Toronto is probably maybe more uh, you have the financial district uh, more uh, uh, business focus and so on. And I heard some many feedback that uh, yeah, when um, you start your life, um, Montreal is great um, as a um, uh, university student and so on. And, mm -hmm. and there's some good aspect uh, in um, in Toronto when uh, when when you work when you have your you you, you start your business. I know Rodolphe may have a, <laughs> another view on, on 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 the business aspect and the support for innovation, which is better than in in Ontario. More likely, yes. Mm -hmm. The interesting aspect of the Ontario, there is uh, people in the audience uh, looking at uh, uh, being kind of uh, um, looking at French speaking uh, system and so on. Um, Ontario is really a, a, a bilingual uh, province in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a full public French uh, speaking kind of school system. So if you have kids and so on, you can get them learning school or uh, French at school. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have both the English and the French uh, public system without having to go to the uh, to the to the lycée français or the, uh, the, the the current French school, which is which is fairly good. And this is thanks to Quebec, actually, this is there is some oh. and, and Canadian laws that allows or um, um, require that both languages are are being taught. And uh, thank you. And, and what about good. Rodolphe? What do you think? Can, can you bring on you know, some insights on, on UN. Yeah, well, so I, I do agree um, in a sense that Montreal is not a business mm -hmm. city. It's not a business oriented city. Um, I mean, in the neighborhood, my company is I'm the one wearing jacket. I'm the only person <laughs> uh, in the in the entire neighborhood wearing a jacket every day. Um, it's, it's just an example to show you that it's a it's a great R&D city. Um, so we do not do any business in, in Montreal, almost zero business in Montreal. We do all our business in uh, Europe, uh, France, uh, US, and a little bit in the rest of Canada, but Montreal, Quebec overall is a very small yeah. market. I mean, it's 8 million people, it's, it's very small. And that's the only French speaking part of North America. So you have to adapt everything to an 8 million people mm -hmm. market, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense uh, economically speaking. Okay. Uh, however, it's it's a great city, and I insist on that for many, many uh, aspects to uh, live in and uh, in terms of business to put your uh, R&D center. Uh, why? Because there is a huge talent pool. You have tons of amazing developers here. You have uh, Ubisoft, Gameloft. It's a, it's a hub for video games, for AI, etc. So you have tons of good yeah. talent. Uh, and on top of that, you have the amazing R&D credit. Uh, where the government is basically paying back 70% of the salaries of all your R&D team. So all my guys here, 70% um, uh, of their salary mm -hmm. is actually paid back by the government. Yep. Uh, so when you, when you add talent pool to a huge grant and huge help from the government, it makes total sense to actually base your R&D um, here. And that's what we have, R&D okay. HQ with R&D yep. here and every support and all the sales and customer facing uh, teams they are in the market, so US and France. Okay, makes sense. And uh, Olivier, can you comment on the deep side, um, you know, deep tech side? Uh, why is the right place in Toronto and, um, you know? Um, so um, a simple example is the fact that, for instance, with AI and blockchain, so mm -hmm. blockchain was more or less conceived in many different aspects in Toronto. Yeah. 
And AI, the revolution of AI that we're seeing in the last few years has been, the birthplace has been the University of Toronto as well as Montreal. Um, key people at the University of Toronto were fundamental uh, participants in the creation of this revolution as well as Montreal. Mm -hmm. And so you have talent pools there around those two dimensions, AI and blockchain. Uh, okay. And there's also for Toronto an expertise in fintech, uh, which is very different from Montreal. Montreal for me is more the creative city, the creative mm -hmm. market, which is one of the most creative cities I've had the chance to work with and um, really expanding this market throughout the world. Uh, what has been two things very notable in the last few years is with U.S. closing the up talents coming from universities, key research departments from the U.S. coming from Syria or Iran have been moving to Toronto, essentially, yeah. or to other places like Vancouver. So we had access to a new talent pool that we couldn't access before. That's good um, news for us. That's very good news. And the last thing is uh, female founders. There's been a lot of push in the last um, three years, not enough, but it's coming, for <laughs> investing in female founders, wherever they come from. Uh, in the city of Toronto, I don't know for Montreal, but I know in Toronto things are moving pretty faster. Did you see anything, Rudolf, for female founders in Montreal? It's, 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 yeah, no, it's hard to say. Um, it's hard to say. M Montreal and Canada overall on all societal and social aspects are is really uh, uh, forward thinking on all the uh, uh, gender equality, uh, LGBTQ, um, all of the even the, the legalization of cannabis, etc. Mm -hmm. So um, I, so Canada is, is, again, very in advance on all these topics, but still there is uh, tons of work to do, and I can't tell um, uh, about Montreal okay. on that. And uh, what about Alberta, uh, Sebastian? I know that you work also with the province, so um, how's the culture out there? Yeah, it's, uh, so Canada is a big country and, uh, and uh, with uh, several provinces, and, and the culture is different uh, between uh, provinces. And... Uh, and <laughs> The, the main difference of, uh, I liked it when I arrived from Europe uh, in Quebec and Ontario, it's the relationship to conflict. Um, I mean, I know that in, in France we like to argue and uh, we don't have any problem uh, to actually disagree with the other uh, person and we make a point to make sure that they understand that we're not on the same page. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's not really well understood uh, here in Canada. And the interesting aspect is that I found kind of a, um, uh, a different approach towards that in, in, in Alberta. It's kind of uh, the West. Yeah. And it's more the, uh, they're not like a cowboy, like in Texas or so on. In, uh, but they're more the entrepreneur, the go-to uh, uh, mindset is, I found it more um, present or more, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm? Sorry. Like pioneers. Yeah, definitely. They they are more engaged. The the more the entrepreneurship mindset. I found it more uh, uh, definitely uh, over there than mm -hmm. in Ontario and uh, and uh, and they're willing to take risks. So okay. sometimes people in the uh, uh, would like to or are willing to come to, to the US uh, because they are missing that. Uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, or uh, okay stop thinking about uh, all the different scenarios and mm -hmm. and the risk Just aspect go. and so on go straight Just to go. the point yep. and this is this is uh, something I found in, in Alberta more than in Quebec and Ontario oh, okay. so they're less risk adverse than uh, that section of the country interesting and to all entrepreneurs out there uh, are there any criteria you know boxes that need to be checked before coming to Canada um, any cities and there is there any conditions that would be a show a showstopper uh, regardless of other criteria that the startup has met you know this is an advice for um, for foreigners right now uh, um, I, I don't have top of mind a showstopper mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I've seen a lot I've seen so I'm the good friendly guy in Quebec when a cousin of a friend uh, is immigrating here. So I've got call almost on a weekly basis for French people trying to immigrate mm -hmm. to Quebec. Uh, and I'm giving the same advices all the time. So it's really Quebec centric, um, but basically a lot of people don't realize how much there is a culture gap between France and Quebec. 
so the French speaking Canada. So the only advice, and it's not a showstopper, but if some people are picking Quebec because it's an easy uh, mm -hmm. move, uh, because they speak French, you know, it's like uh, our, our dumb cousins and uh, it's a good idea to actually move here uh, because it's going to be easier than move to somewhere else in the world. That's a false idea. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not true. Uh, what I tell and I repeat to every single people I talk to is that they have to be as ready as if they were moving to Uzbekistan. Uh, I mean, Quebec is an entire different country and we have the same language, which we don't really have actually, uh, but it's a, it's a huge yes. culture gap. So that would be the only okay. showstopper. Uh, it's not to pick Quebec because it's an easy move in terms mm -hmm. of culture. It's actually a trap. It's not easier than the US or whatever. Um, Olivier? So so if, if you talk about visa, I mean, uh, in a visa, it's pretty easy. If you have uh, an expertise in AI or blockchain, you know, the doors are wide open uh, by Canada on, on that subject. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a civil engineer, um, it's, it's going to be harder. So it really depends on what, what is your background. Um, now, uh, going into Canada, some of the biggest cultural gap that you might face is how politeness is defined. Speaking about Toronto as a country almost, uh, you know, everybody's polite and nice. It doesn't mean that they are necessarily your best friends. So there's a lot of culture gap on that. And on the business side, the big culture gap is people want to be so nice and so polite, they will mm -hmm. rarely criticize you. So mm -hmm. as you start the company, capturing feedback from where you critical because you could be completely misled. And I've seen a lot of new immigrants um, spending uh, money and time for the wrong reason because they were listening to the customer, but they didn't realize that the customers were gotcha. too kind enough to. Mm. And Sebastian, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with Rodolf and, uh, and Olivier on that. Uh, I would even be uh, stronger on what Olivier just said. There is a uh, by um, willing to be too nice or uh, avoiding conflict. Uh, there is a, so they actually criticize you, but not in front of you yeah. and it's mm. behind the scene. So okay. it's, there is some hypocrisy uh, uh, in the uh, business uh, relationship. Okay. And after I would say a few years, you kind of read between the line and learn mm. how it works. Yeah. and not waste uh, too much of your time. But that's something to be aware of. Now I studied so body is, language for that. <laughs> yeah, and tell. this is what uh, this is what I didn't find on the West side. That's mm -hmm. why Canada is not only Quebec and Ontario. And I would encourage uh, any um, uh, French people who wants to emigrate okay. to really consider other provinces. And even okay. on the West side, Vancouver is probably a really nice experience too as well, but okay. more on the green sustainability aspect yeah. of it. Okay, for time purposes, let's jump into the third last part, um, funding and growth. How about uh, your experience with in uh, VCs and private investors? What is the, the biggest lesson so far? Um, Rudolf. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, just to put it in context, we've raised 20 million yeah. so far with mm -hmm. Potluck uh, with five VC firms, uh, one French one and four Canadians. Um, so I've, I've pitched to two Canadian mm -hmm. VC firms and I'm actually working uh, with four of them since uh, two or three years now. Um, so uh, that was mm -hmm. for the context. And for the big lessons, it's... Uh, Canada, in technologi technologically speaking, is like the little sister of uh, US. So basically, uh, what, what, I, what, I, what I've seen the most is that when you have a signal from an American VC firm, uh, it's a very strong signal uh, for Canadian VC firm, and they will tend to follow uh, the lead of an American VC firm. So um, one of my lessons is that uh, you need at one point to do a roadshow in the US, which is what I've mm -hmm. done, uh, not necessarily to work with American VC firms because they are more aggressive and less funder yes. friendly, um, but at, at least to show that what you're building is not Canada centric and there is interest from uh, people down the, in the South. And, uh, and that is very useful to actually leverage uh, Canada. So that would be one of the big lessons that I've learned. Uh, raising Thank you. What about Sebastian? You raised uh, 20 million so far? 
Yeah, from a, an Italian, I would say, um, um, wealth individual, uh, but also an, an industrial um, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. He has a railway company, aircraft and satellite company. So lots of synergies with what we do. Mm -hmm. um, from the last four years, um, I mean, our project is really capital intensive uh, and, uh, and kind of uh, unique. And there's not... I mean, the, the current financial system is not yet ready uh, to finance early stage R&D heavy development. And it's not a Canadian, French, American. I went to Australia, Middle East. I, I went around the world to try to find, uh, I would say, um, VC and investors interested in what we do. Mm -hmm. And I arrived to the conclusion that the best way to succeed is actually um, to, to be able to demonstrate that you kind of almost don't need VC money and that you can self-sustain the business and grow up to a certain scale where you become really interesting and you can actually negotiate uh, better terms moving forward. So it's more difficult. Uh, there's different ways to do it. Uh, of course, you need to leverage uh, public funding. Mm -hmm. uh, both uh, we've done that in Canada and in uh, and in Europe. And uh, and again, it's like yeah, uh, strategically speaking, if you can demonstrate that you have revenue from different streams, helping you to grow the company slowly but surely. Yes. Uh, that's the best way uh, for us actually to continue and secure a government agreement, same as the one we've done in in Alberta uh, recently. Yeah, I agree. I, f I forgot to introduce myself, but uh, I work at TD as a relationship manager, and um, I, I do agree with your point. Um, you know, helping entrepreneurs out there. Uh, Rudolf, is there any uh, one piece of advice you could give to any startup seeking investment in Canada? You know, a key to success. Um, to not focus on the Canada market, maybe okay. only. Um, that's it's 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 a small market. Uh, you have a lot of uh, you have few native uh, Canadian companies. Uh, it's it's a bit rough to say that, but you have tons of American uh, branches, uh, uh, Canadian branches of American mm -hmm. companies. Sorry, um, and, and very often, uh, if you're targeting HQ and if you're targeting uh, whatever the CMO of a Fortune 500 company, uh, well, your decision maker is in the US, uh, even if it's to deploy a solution in Canada. Um, so I, I'm seeing North America as one mm -hmm. big block. Uh, that's why a lot of American people are making jokes saying that Canada is, is kind of a, an American yeah. state um, or, or a, a variety of different American states. And um, that's what I would try to actually demonstrate. And I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I have American mm -hmm. clients or at least clients outside purely Canada because Canada is Again, 35 million yeah. people, so it, uh, it's half the population of France. And uh, in, in France, you wouldn't give the advice to any company to only focus on the French market or show that their intent is to only focus gotcha. on the French market. So that would be that would be my main advice. And maybe the, one of the biggest mistakes that I've mm -hmm. done in the past, I, I've created a company that was Quebec-centric, okay. and uh, so even worse. Uh, and Quebec is not big enough for VC to be. Thank you. Too. Okay, we, we got a, one question from the, the audience. Uh, it seems to me, um, I don't know, it's a, I don't know who asked this question, but it seems to me, <laughs> it seems to me that the average Canadian company or technology speaking a little behind compared to U.S. companies. Would you agree? If so, what would explain this? Behind in terms of commercial activity or? I guess so. Maybe, you know, in terms of growth. Valuation. Yeah, valuation. Maybe. So valuation, uh, uh, valuation discount is about 40% on average for mm -hmm. being a Canadian company. Uh, but our cost of operation is much lower than a U.S. company, so it compensates. We need mm -hmm. to raise less to achieve more. Yeah. Um, in terms of the education of the ecosystem of investors, investors in Canada are much less educated than in the U.S. by far. Mm -hmm. um, but there's great innovation, innovation that has taken place in the last three years with the Creative Destruction Lab. So mm -hmm. for any newcomers who wants to come to Toronto or Montreal or on the west side, you have to look for the Creative Distribution Lab. This is the hub for innovation, bringing yes. investors from the U.S. and Europe to invest in. in um, 
So we're behind, but just on those notes, in terms of okay. commercial activity, we could be leaders in the respective markets without any issue. Okay, I got another one, another question here. Um, how did you attract talent uh, in this competitive environment and make people want to work for you? Uh, Rod Rodolphe. Uh, well, yes. uh, culture. culture. Um, that, that would the culture that would be my my biggest one specifically mm -hmm. in Montreal. You uh, indeed, uh, as it has been mentioned in the in the panel earlier, people are choosing that city because of the of its way of life. Uh, so if you are if they are picking that city because of its casual way of life, and then they they pick they won't pick a company that is like super harsh and puts tons of pressure on people. So uh, you need to have a great company culture. It needs to be. Uh, to be shown, so you need to have a. Uh, we have an amazing rating on Glassdoor, so we have like 4.9 stars uh, with like, uh, like many many ratings, uh, and that's our criteria number one okay. to attract people. Actually, we're like showing like realistically that we have amazing ratings and amazing culture, and that's what attracts okay. a lot of people. And Sebastian, what do you think? Uh, well, we're a bit different uh, because of the topic we're dealing with. Okay. Uh, I'll just give an example. We did a. Uh, a posting, uh, a job posting, two job posting on Indeed uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we had the posting for a week. We had uh, 300 resumes. So, <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> the selection process was uh, was a um, it was a good problem to have. It was difficult, but <laughs> painful, but uh, a good problem to have. So, uh, and uh, to go back to the point of. Uh, our Canadian company a bit behind uh, American mm -hmm. ones. If uh, our objective is to actually to beat uh, Virgin, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, demonstrate that uh, we're better than the American uh, uh, anytime soon. Okay. <laughs> and uh, well, I have a personal question here too. You know, from because of this pandemic um, situation. So I I remember Rodolphe, you mentioned the wartime CEO. How do you deal? You know, what is your strategy to serve the wave and uh, you know get there you uh, how, how do you um, manage your cash for the company well uh yeah it's a very hard question i, I uh, 2020 was a harsh year for for a lot of people but for ceos mm -hmm. uh, as well um uh, well my, my main guideline was very simple uh it was protect the core people protect mm -hmm. the cash that was my two key things um, so I, I fought very hard so that I, I yes. protected both. Um, and, and the strategy I decided to go with was to raise money in the middle of the pandemic. So we've raised uh, our Series A in the middle of the wow. pandemic, actually, uh, because we were able to show traction because it was uh, funnily enough, but good to be in the survey industry uh, during a pandemic like that, because as all the uh, consuming behaviors are changing, people need to go and assess them. So it was I was on the right uh, side of, mm -hmm. the, of the world, uh, fortunately enough. Um, so yeah, I've decided to to be uh, radically transparent. I've something crazy that I've done is I've shared the um, the, the amount we had on the bank account oh, wow. to the entire company. That's I was like, okay, so this is the amount we have on the bank account. This is how much uh, spent we have per month. If we Mm -hmm. do a scenario where we reduce the revenues to zero for nine months. This is the number of months of survival we have in front of us. And we were in a super mm -hmm. good situation uh, okay. in terms of cash. So I was like super... Okay, super and uh, last... Uh, I've also reduced my salary. Uh, what about Olivier in two words? Because we need to wrap up in terms of... Uh, we did the same full transparency on what was left on the bank account before the next raise. We did okay. raise also during... Uh, but mm -hmm. it was also very aggressive in terms of sales. We we jumped in terms of sales tremendously during COVID-19. It was extremely beneficial to us. Congrats. Thank you very much for your time um, to the three of you. And I really enjoyed our discussion. Um, hopefully, our audience uh, will have some good takeaways from this panel. Thank you Thank so you. much. Hope you enjoyed Thank the you discussion too. as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye, -bye. Salut tout le monde.